Well, you have the unglamorous work of getting the trees and stuff off the fence line every springtime. And those battery powered saws and pole saws are usually the tool of choice because you can just reach right down and cut them. Especially the ones that are like past that dog right there. You know, those like elderberry bushes type things. You just reach right down with a pole saw and nip them off. You know, every springtime, and there's a tree down over there. So I got a little saw for this one right here. Sometimes it's just about being convenient and light. This saw is perfect because I store them dry where basically I run them out of fuel and uh, with that little primer bulb you can get gas right to the carburetor so it makes it really easy to start. There's a choke. It's always normally on, it's just a kill switch down there. Now this saw here you haven't seen since midwinter, so it's going to have to go through its self-tune uh, phase when it first fires off and stuff. Because last time it was run it was in the teens, so let's see if it'll fire. And let me block some of that a little more and get to that tree, get it out of the way.
wow, things have changed since the last time I was up here. I think the last video we did up here, that was either way down across the field where the poplars are, or it was right over here where me and Bob were working in this hedgerow. So I got to come up here and clean some up so we don't pick up that dirt and stuff with the haybine and the baler. But the other thing I got to do, and I have a little bit of video, is stuff like this. I've got to chop it up and get it off the field. Got to clean up that dirt, tractor work. Just get things ready for, for hay, you know, the hay season. Just begin to go. See, I can get this kind of thing cleaned up and stacked up inside the hedgerow now before the grass grows and the brush grows. But it also allows me to sort of clean things out a little bit in here. Now, since this is about chainsaws, <laughs> I've got to pick a saw for this kind of work. And I got a fence post to repair that I got tore down. That's going to be good firewood for next year. Thin out some of this stuff in here too. That whole gate got ripped out. But look at that field. This is 222 time. Or maybe 223. Uh, your camera's not going to pick it up, but they're pretty active out there on the other end. The other end's almost 400 yards away. But I have a, a bunch of stuff that I've got to take care of now. If you look carefully, you'll start seeing some that are leaning into the field. They're going to fall down if, if I don't take them down and stack them up. But let's start with this one. And I have some dead ones down there that I want to take down before the underbrush gets to the point where it's hard to work. Every year, never stops, gets me a chance to run the saw. So, I can get my chaps on and get a saw out and start cleaning up this mess. Well, I haven't done a lot of saw stuff recently, partly because I'm really wrapped up doing uh, a couple of boat motor projects. And since I got a boat motor that's completely scattered around my workbench, I don't have any space for saws right now. This will work for now. Pretty sure. Look at that. That would be a victory. Lifted it right off. Very nice. And I got that apart. Things are not as good as I would have hoped. So I'm not sure what I'm going to be able to salvage out of this one. But I'm going to come up with a bin for each, each hole. And the one thing that's interesting about these is these are literally fractured caps. You can see the fracture right there. So these caps have got to go in the right orientation of the connecting rod. But the other thing I'm seeing is this, this uh, motor was trashed before they even started running it. Look at the, all the pitting and corrosion in there. It's obviously a motor that had sat for a long time. That's the middle hole. And so I don't, I'm not sure I can, I can actually use this crank either. Maybe I'll see if I can find somebody who can fix the crank. That piston's fine. And both of these other pistons are really not that bad. They're not perfect, but they're nothing to throw away. All right, let's hammer this out so we have something salvageable. So basically, the chainsaws that I have at my disposal that are not in the retirement home, just sitting there collecting dust of these four right here. And the question would be, saw selection, which one would you choose? You know, I, I see so many of these uh, threads online about what's the best firewood saw, what's the best farm saw, what's the best this, what's the best that. 
And I always find that kind of humorous because really for me, the best saw is the one that you have in your hands that runs. That's enough to do the job. So for that little bit of brush right there, any one of these saws would work fine. The next level of discussion is which one would be easiest to do that kind of work with. Now I go by the, the theory of if it's about work, the small saw that's capable of doing it in a timely fashion is the right one. I don't see the sense in carrying around a 70cc saw for a log like that. So one of my smaller saws would be obviously my first choice. This makes no sense, right? This is ridiculous. Even though to do the job, it just, why would I want to carry 80ccs around, you know, and all the weight that's associated with that. And then I have ultimate old man saw. That's actually a good choice. Now, there's two parts of these discussions, always. There's the practical approach, and then there's the emotional approach, or some blend. And in my case, this would be the practical choice because it's got enough bar and more than enough power to very easily handle all that work, and it's the smallest and lightest saw in this group. Now you get into the emotional side, what that's about is what I feel like running and what I want to run. And I don't feel like running an ultimate old man saw, you know? Nothing against it, it's just not the saw I want to run today, as simple as that. So that leaves these two. This is the one I, I really want to run, because it was my last project saw. While it might not be the most practical saw, it's the one that I feel like running. So. Probably, if I didn't have a camera, I'd probably pick this saw right here, and it would do fine, you know? And then there's this one right here. This is my stock 562, and on the list of saws on this bench, it would be probably the second most practical saw, but I don't want to run it. So I'm going to end up using that one, even though it's not the right saw if you try to use logic. Point being that none of these decisions are all logic. Based on the things that you have in your truck or your disposal, you select. And I guess the other way of looking at this is this one cost me 300 bucks. I bought it from an old farmer. This one cost me effectively nothing because I built it out of a junk pile. Same with that, I've got maybe 100 bucks in parts in that one. This one here cost me almost $600 because I had to buy all the bits and pieces. So that one there, from a dollar's standpoint, is at least cost effective. This is probably the most. But you see, that whole concept of what's the best, it really doesn't mean a damn thing to me. You pick the one you want to run, and if it's in that hit zone of reasonable, go, go for it. And so with me, it's one of those two saws because I don't want to run those two. Just that simple. Whether they do it or not, it's not the point. I just don't want to run them. Not today. And like I said, I'd probably pick this one. This is what I want to run. I want to put more time on it. I just finished realizing that it spent the whole time at mats with a loose spark plug. You believe that? And uh, talk about being embarrassed. And I just want to put some more time on it with a with the plug tightened and everything else. But what I will do is I want to fire all these saws up and let them dry out because they've been sitting in the back of my truck now for a few weeks. They've been rained on and stuff like that. This is the first sunny day in a while. So for video purposes, let me get all four of them fired up if I can. This is the 24 inch bar saw that has a, the, this one has that thinner base gasket with a pop-up piston, some minor mods. Let's see what it does. It's going to have to adjust to a new temperature. Figure I'll let it run for 30 or 40 seconds idling and it'll tune itself for the low speed. Then after about 30 or 40 seconds, 30 or 40 seconds in the cut, it'll tune it for high speed.
based on the 555 cases with a small mount barricade. this is a beast it could do that job but it may not be the best saw in this pick right here but I could do it but it's that beast it's too heavy so I'm gonna put it away how about an old man saw because I don't think I'm gonna run that one today Let's see if it restarts This actually is the best saw for the day, if you're all logical about it. Lightest small mount bar. You got a semi chisel chain because that's what the speed cut is. Trust me, you do not miss a full chisel chain. These speed cut bars on these smaller saws are awesome. I really like it. But I'm gonna put it away. I think I'm gonna fire off the stalker next. Maybe I'll put a little time on it. It needs some to run the gas out of it.
So what just happened here? This is the one that I planned on running. That's what I want to run. This is my favorite project saw at the moment. And if you know my channel, that changes from week to week, month to month. Fired them all up, because that's what I do, just to give them a little bit of run time. Ran the big one, just to show what it looks like running a big saw. It was pretty clumsy, but you could get the job done. Especially a younger person would probably like that saw. That longer bar, you didn't have to bend over. There's the argument, right? Fired up the stock saw and stock configuration, got working. And that damn thing's a nice saw. It's a sweet saw to run, and I just figured the hell. Running good, things are moving. It was the best saw for today. Now we got some more trees to work on, so maybe that changes, but that saw runs good. those eye bolts so I can get a hold of it. I had to push that back a little bit. I'm going to have to do the same on the other side, but I got this side broke free, so what I'm going to do is go over and get the other side and get this thing out of here. 